Remembering an Unsung Hero. Welcome to part three of my History of Nursing series. I have done a couple of videos. Part one was on the history of nursing itself. Part two was about Florence Nightingale. I'll leave links in the description as well at the end of this video. In this video, I'm going to be discussing and sharing about Mary Jane Seacole. So who was Mary Jane Seacole? The nursing profession evolved quite nicely and is now recognized as one of the most respected professions. And as a profession, nursing is at the forefront of healthcare. So who was Mary Jane Seacole? Mary Jane Seacole was a contemporary of Florence Nightingale. And although through a written account by Mary Seacole herself, they did meet once, but I'll share more about that later. I'm not here to bring a debate about these two women as they both rightly have their place in history. Mary Seacole is considered by some to be a controversial person in history and should not have the recognition that she does. But is she controversial because of who she was, what she did, how she did it, because of her gender or the color of her skin? I did not make this video to say she does or doesn't deserve recognition. I'm just going to share some information about a woman who provided care to real people, real patients, albeit nursing-like care or just care. You can make your own determination about whatever you want, but from and as a nurse and a male nurse, even when being a male nurse was not acceptable at one time, to being able to be a nurse, share about nursing, nursing topics, nursing history, nursing educational topics, and even nursing educational music. In order for that to happen, barriers had to be removed, and the shoulders of those who did the removing, well, those were some strong shoulders, because not only did they remove the barriers, but they took those barriers and turned them into the foundational steps to grow and evolve to where we are today. So please watch this with an open mind and some reverence to those who have come and gone before and done things, overcome things, still persevered and have given and left us nurses and also people a legacy about how to care for people no matter what. And one more thing, welcome to my YouTube channel and my nursing channel. My name is Nurse Master Charlie. So now back to the video. Mary Jane Seacole was a fascinating woman. She was a pioneer, an entrepreneur, a doctress, an author, and also is referred to as a nurse. She was a role model and did what nurses do best. She provided care. She was brave and was the type of person who was not afraid to stand up to anything and to do what, what she wanted to do. She was driven, motivated, and dedicated to her cause, the care of people. Now mind you, she was all this in a time where women had few rights, were not to be so vocal, so determined, or so outspoken, or so anything, and especially a woman of color or even biracial. So with all that said, who was Mary Jane Seacole? And where did she come from? And what did she do? And was she actually a nurse? Mary Seacole was born Mary Jane Grant. And although she never disclosed the actual date of her birth, her birth year is known from records. She was born in 1805 in Kingston, Jamaica to a Jamaican mother of African heritage and a Scottish father. So yes, she was biracial. Jamaica was a colony of Britain, and in a time of slavery, she was born as a free person, a British citizen, but that would not translate into being free from discrimination and prejudice. Mary's mother, Mrs. Grant, practiced Afro-Caribbean medicine, also known as Creole medicine, and was considered to be a doctress, a nurse, a midwife, and an herbalist. A doctress is defined as a woman in some cultures who are believed to be able to cure illness and also have magical powers. Mary's mother operated a boarding house, a type of hotel named Blundell Hall in Jamaica. Her father, a white man, was an officer in the Scottish army, something Mary was very proud of. She took pride of being a part of two cultures, both of what she would use to become the Mary Seacole of history. Was Mary Seacole an actual nurse? First, let's understand the term nurse. Nursing by definition was one that was attributed to motherhood as with the baby suckling on a mother's breast for milk, then evolved into caring for the sick. At the time, women were the primary caregivers of those who gave care to family members. And as they gained experience in caring for others, also nursed non-family members who were sick. Eventually, the term did not singularly address itself to breastfeeding, but nursing also became synonymous with Christianity and caring, caring for the sick, feeding the sick, and caring for those who died. So there was a great connection to caring for the sick as in the Christian sense, as well as the nursing sense. It was not yet a secular duty or job. Technical nursing schools in the traditional sense as they are known today did not exist. As I mentioned in my other videos, at the time, nursing was not a respected profession. Women who committed crimes had the option to go to jail 
or to go be a nurse, which was caring for the sick and all the duties that that entailed. However, there was the Deaconess Institute at Kaiserwerth, Germany. This was a small hospital with a training school for deaconesses, which in a way was a precursor to the traditional nursing school of today. This is the nursing school that Florence Nightingale would attend, and it would be Florence Nightingale who would be instrumental in solidifying the foundation for the institutionalization of today's nursing schools. Training for nurses was in its infancy in Britain, and although Florence Nightingale attended the Deaconesses Institute, it would be years later until after the Crimean War that she would establish the Nightingale Training School for Nurses in 1860. So to say that Mary Seacole attended a formal nursing school, no she did not, because traditional nursing schools technically did not exist at that time. However, the type of nursing that did exist at that time, Mary Seacole was already doing it. The type of nursing that Mary had learned was learning by hands-on, from the time she was a child to an adult, including the use of herbal remedies. She was so ingrained in caring for people, sick people, in the worst conditions, and with the only medicine she knew of and learned about was from her home in Jamaica. And at this stage in history, the medicine that Mary used was just about as good as any other type of medicine that existed in that day. If you look back on the herbal remedies and the healing processes that she used, some were based on medicinal properties that are still in use today by holistic practitioners, others not so much. And Mary in hindsight herself admittedly attests to some of the cures that she used as not to being life prolonging. Mary learned by watching and following her mother care for the sick in the boarding house where she cared for soldiers. Mary received much of her former education and training from her patroness. She traveled many times from Jamaica to London, even visiting hospitals in Britain. Mary was well versed in the Jamaican healing arts, but also learned to care for patients in Jamaica, Panama, Cuba, as well as in a British army hospital. When she was not in Britain, she was called on many times by the citizens of Jamaica and the military personnel in Jamaica, Panama, and Cuba to care for the sick and specifically her experience with cholera and yellow fever. Eventually, Mary Grant married Horatio Edwin Seacole in 1836, when she then became Mary Seacole. Together, they would open a supply store, but the business would not do well and eventually would close. This would force the Seacoles to return to the boarding house in Kingston where her mother was. Sadly, shortly after in 1843, a fire ravaged through Kingston, destroying the boarding house. In addition, her husband and her mother both died the next year in 1844. But Mary Seacole, being who she was, did not let these traumatic and dramatic events in her life derail her of caring for people as well as having her own business. After, Mary built a new hotel in Jamaica. It was a boarding house, or a hotel as they called it, and, it, and she named it New Blundell Hall. There she would establish herself as a doctress and a healer to the local British military establishment. When the cholera outbreak occurred in 1850, she learned firsthand from the physicians how they treated it. As she traveled to Panama later that year, she was again greeted by her old friend, cholera. As the locals in Panama did not know what was causing death and making them sick, Mary's experience with cholera in Jamaica became invaluable. She was sought after for her nursing care and her doctor's medicine. After Panama, Mary returned to Jamaica in 1853, where she was confronted with another epidemic, that of yellow fever. This is where her experience with herbal medicines became invaluable, in which she successfully treated yellow fever patients. Again, the British military establishment in Jamaica recognized her knowledge and skill and requested nurses from her. So she would have had to be known or be recognized as a nurse and a leader if those around her requested nurses from her. Mary then returned to Panama in 1854. And while there, she learned from the military and the travelers about the conditions occurring in the Crimean War. She discovered that many of the soldiers that she had treated in Jamaica and Panama were being subjected to not only war injuries, but also to diseases such as cholera. She decided to go to London to make her desires known to help Britain by assisting in caring for the soldiers. Mary by now was 50 years old when she arrived in London. She applied to and offered her services to help as a nurse in the Crimean War. But even with the highest recommendations from military officials, those she had helped care for and treat in Jamaica, the government officials in London would deny her many times. The associates of Florence Nightingale, who were recruiting nurses, also did not give their acceptance, nor the approval that she had desired. Mary Seacole wrote in her biography that although she was more than qualified, she may have fell victim to prejudices due to the color of her skin and where she was denied attending the Crimean War as a nurse. 
as she may have had more real-life clinical experience than the nurses and or the nurses in training who accompanied Florence Nightingale to the Crimean War. Mary Seacole was a lifelong learner. So I believe that although she did not attend a formal nursing school, which at the time were more religiously affiliated, she probably had more actual hands-on experience dealing with various diseases, healing medications, herbs, treating and caring, sharing, feeding and listening, supporting in life and death, even recruiting nurses to care for patients in Jamaica. She did this on a day-to-day -day basis from the time as a child assisting her mother to now at 50 years of age with much experience, possibly more than many others who may have had the title of nurse in that day. As she was not formally accepted by London and the associates of Florence Nightingale, she did travel to the military hospital in Scutari. It is there in the middle of the Crimean War where Mary writes that she had an encounter with Florence Nightingale. Mary writes that it was not a disrespectful meeting nor anything truly negative. She did write that Florence Nightingale was a slight figure in the nurse's dress with a pale, gentle hand while the other supports the elbow, a position which gives her countenance a keen inquiring expression, which is rather marked. And she did ask and receive a room for the night, a place to sleep until the morning when Mary could leave the hospital at Scutari. Although she was being denied being a nurse, she still wanted to provide care, her type of nursing care, to her sons. Her sons was the affectionate title she gave to the soldiers that she had cared for previously in Jamaica who were now in Crimea. She also became affectionately known as Mother Seacole for the motherly type of care she provided to her patients and to the soldiers. She decided to take matters into her own hands and it is here with her take charge attitude as well as a businesswoman's mentality that she would build a, what she called a hotel near the battlefield. Although there were no actual rooms to stay in, she called it the British Hotel which was more like a restaurant slash supply store. She and others would construct it using scraps from driftwood, metal, and the like. She would feed and care for the soldiers either in her hotel and in some accounts out on the battlefield. It was even reported that she would provide care to soldiers on both sides of the battle lines. After the Crimean War came to an end in 1856 and the military personnel were leaving, Mary did find herself to be in debt due to the food and supplies she was no longer able to sell and the fact that she did not want to track down those who she gave a type of credit to. When she returned to England, she was not in the best of health and was in debt to where she had to declare bankruptcy. But through those that she had cared for and the life she touched, a fund was started to help her and with the support of donations, enough money was raised to eliminate her bankruptcy. There is even one source that reports Florence Nightingale secretly contributed to the fund. Mary would encounter many prejudices due to the color of her skin and her gender and possibly her attitude, which was of caring for people no matter what they look like. Mary Seacole died on May 14, 1881 at her home in London. She is buried at St. Mary's Catholic Cemetery, Kensal Green in London, England. Mary Seacole never received any type of official recognition except for the respect and love from those she cared for and those who supported her. She simply faded into history and was pretty much forgotten until 1973 when she was rediscovered through her grave. Through this discovery, it was learned about what and how she contributed to British history, specifically the Crimean War. And the Mary Seacole Memorial Association was founded in 1980, almost 100 years later after her death. In 1991, she was awarded the Jamaican Order of Merit, posthumously. In 2004, the website Every Generation conducted a survey and voted Mary Seacole as the greatest black Britain. In 2016, a statue of Mary Seacole was erected and unveiled on the grounds of St. Thomas's Hospital in London. The inscription, a quote from her book, reads, Wherever the need arises on whatever distant shore, I ask no higher or greater privilege than to minister to it. Unfortunately, there was some controversy over the statue on whether or not she should be recognized and the why. My thought is this, you can't care and do something all your life without getting better. Think of whatever sport, art, topic, you like and that particularly favorite athlete or musician or artist. If they just played their sport, played their instrument and had no love of the game or music, they would never make the team or make a melody or a song. Mary Seacole had both, the desire to care and help people and she practiced her discipline and she did it all of her life. You can make your own conclusion. Had Mary Seacole been able to combine her lifetime of experiences, knowledge and skills with the evolving knowledge development of nursing as a profession, nursing philosophies, nursing skills, 
germ theories, and much, much more. Who knows what she could have done? So I leave you with this final thought. Mary Seacole wrote a book, a semi-autobiography, titled The Wonderful Adventures of Mary Seacole in Many Lands, because that was what she knew, who she was, where she came from, what she did, how she did it, and why she did what she did, and also stories of her day. Can you imagine what she could have wrote about with all the insight and knowledge that she had a lifetime's worth if she was allowed to focus on being a nurse in the traditional sense and also for the nursing profession? So if you learned something and or found value in this video, please be sure to give this video a like as it helps out my channel to be shared out in the YouTube universe. And leave a comment on what you learned or you just want to share about. And if you didn't like it, same thing. Not everybody is going to agree. And I did not make this video to be controversial, just to share some information. If you are interested in health information and nursing related content like this, I'd like to invite you to subscribe and be part of my nursing channel. And also hit the notification bell so you can be made aware of when I release new videos. Also, don't forget to share this video, especially with those who want to learn about topics such as this, especially those of you who are in nursing school or starting nursing school or pre-nursing school. Please be sure to check out part one, the history of nursing and part two, which was about Florence Nightingale, as well as my many other nursing topic related videos, which range from nursing assessments to the five rights of medication administration, as well as my nursing and health related music lyric videos here on YouTube. If you're not aware, I write and create nursing and health related educational music. So be sure to find my song about Florence Nightingale titled, The Lady with the Lamp here on YouTube and my other songs such as What is Diabetes, the ABG song, the Check Your Feet song, the Flu Shot song, the Nursing Process song, and What Are Vital Signs song. In addition to YouTube, all my songs are available on all music streaming platforms such as Spotify, Apple Music, Pandora, and Amazon Music to name a few. So take it on the go with you so you can listen anywhere to keep you inspired. And you can be studying while you're listening to music. What a concept. So be sure to check those out. Also be sure to check out my nursing blog on my website, www.nursemastercharlie.com. I post new nursing and health related blog articles weekly to monthly related to what I share here on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. I'll leave links in the description for that also. So until the next video, go save lives and make a difference in someone's life. God bless and goodbye.